What's going on, people? I would like to welcome all of you to another Q11 edition of the Talk to Q Radio Show. My name is Quincy, and this is my show. And with the Q11s, what I like to do is interview people to expose my audience to new things. I talk to authors, entrepreneurs, entertainers, counselors, other podcasters, and sometimes just your everyday person who just has something to say about a particular topic. So it's an opportunity for you to get to know these people up and close and learn their story. What sparked the passion to choose a certain career or what inspired them to write that book? Or why is this person so opinionated about a particular topic? So just sit back and enjoy the show and please be encouraged to share. A lot of my guests, much like myself, kind of do their thing by word of mouth. So the more that you share, like or comment on a social media post, then the more you can help me grow the show. And it also gives more support to the people that I bring on the show who are looking to get their services, products, and talents out to the masses. So without further ado, let's get to the interview. What's going on, folks? All right. I want to welcome you to another Q1 edition of T2Q. And I will go ahead and get to my guest. She is a journalist, news anchor, reporter, and entrepreneur from the Pelican State of Louisiana. Please welcome Miss Tammy Estwick to the Talk to Q radio show. Tammy, how's it going? It's good. How are you? I'm doing great. I appreciate you taking time to do the show. And so let's start here first. Let me ask you this. How long have you been a news journalist? Oh, my God. Um, I want to say it's what I'm going with is over a decade at this point. Um <laughs> in the industry in one facet or another. It's probably been a little bit longer if you include like my experience when I was still in high school in New Orleans, because we had um, something called the Homework Assistance Program where it was our cable access uh, channel and a bunch of kids got together and like tried to help other kids with their homework. But I always tell people really all we did was like literally play on television and just talk and hang out. So it was an interesting uh, start to my career. All right. So, I mean, was it high school that you realized you wanted to be involved in in this type of work? I mean, when did it all kind of spark for you that, hey, this is something I can do for a career? So I'm going to say um, I never really thought about it until um, probably I was getting into it. Um, I was just one of these kids that I was enamored with my older brother. And so everything Gary did, I was like right there on his coattails. We are a couple of years apart. So if my big brother was there, I wanted to be there. Uh, he went and played football. I wanted to be a cheerleader. Uh, he went into the Boy Scouts. I wanted to be a Girl Scout. So it was one of those type of things. And when I, he went into uh, television and media, I was just like, I want to do that too. It's just, we ended up taking two different French. So um, that's how I ended up in high school, but it wasn't until like I actually got out of college and was looking for a job. I was like, hey, he's a writer. Maybe I can do something. Happened. Oh. Okay. Okay. And we're having a little audio drop out. I'm catching like every other word at the moment. So um, we'll see if we can work through that. But so when was your first TV appearance? And do you recall how you felt for that very first time? So that first appearance was probably, um, well, it depends on what you're talking about, because my high school also had a television studio in it. And so we would have like early morning broadcast. Okay. that was like one of those, you know, nervous moments. But as far as um, legitimate broadcast television, like the <laughs> station, yeah. The funniest moment was my very first morning uh, in Greenville, Mississippi, which is where I legitimately started my anchor experience. If you okay. want actual getting paid level. Um, I'm sitting at the desk and the, um, floor guy is 
counting down behind the camera, five, four, three. And so I'm behind the desk and my foot is doing this, like the desk. And I'm going, God, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm trying to like catch my breath. And like, um, I think I kept that first clip like locked in a vault somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> But it was a very nerve wracking experience. And I just, I remember like my heart just pounding. And by the time I got through the hour show, um, I was so relieved, but I really didn't think I was going to make it. I really didn't. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure it can be nerve wracking just once the lights go on and you know that everyone is watching you. Um, I can only imagine, especially in the audience you know that long and um i'm pretty sure every time you spoke you were just thinking of trying not to think about every word you know just trying to get through it and but you did and you're here and you're a pro now so it's no big deal but now a news broadcast to us you know to the viewers you know it's usually around 30 minutes some shows are an hour but usually around 30 minutes but there's so much preparation that occurs before the actual presentation is the prep time for a broadcast really stressful and time consuming? I wouldn't necessarily say stressful unless it's a story, um, for instance, like Christopher Epps. Um, when we had to cover uh, Mississippi's prison boss and um, the, the kickbacks that he was getting. There is a lot of stress as far as making sure you have all the details, but you're also getting the story right. Um, everything is accurate, but you have more than the other station. So, um, when it comes to things like that, it can get a little stressful. And then of course, everything that you've gathered and pass it along to people. Um, and as you know, there's this, uh, there's this joke and I'm not going to tell it right. I'm sure, but it's like, you can tell somebody something and as they pass it on, uh, it starts to lose words. And yeah emotions and what have you. Well, mm -hmm. it was that. So you have to go back and check up on everyone you told it to and everyone they told it to to make sure everyone gets it right. So there's a lot of meetings that go into what we do, um, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, a lot of text messages. And uh, by the end of the day, you know, especially if it's a big story, it can be um, very exhausting. But um <laughs> I mean, how long of a work day are we talking? Well, obviously, it's it's going to be anywhere from an eight to I'm going to say twelve, depending on what, okay. um, who the main players are. You know, if it, if it's a court story, does the court shut down? Um, the James Hutto case, the guy who um murdered the um woman on the pig farm, that case carried on for weeks. And I remember uh, coming in on a weekend to get the uh, actual verdict. Uh, so it it really just depends. Yeah, but my, my dad uh, had a joke. He always says, um, I think you owe them people money. And I was like, what people, daddy? He's like, you say you go to work for eight hours, but then I only see you for like 30 seconds. So what do you want? <laughs> I said, don't tell my boss that. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously your reporting because you literally, you might only see us like during what we call the stand up. Right. You know, it takes us all day to gather a lot of these details, depending on, like I said, how big the story is. Okay. And I, I figured it had to be a lot more to it. But now you cover everything. I mean, you've done everything, I guess, from, you know, your feel good stories to breaking news type of situations. Have you ever felt threatened or in danger like during a report, during some of that breaking news type stuff? Because there are some journalists who find themselves, you know, in harm's way, just trying to get the story. I've been in a precarious situation here and there. Um, <laughs> I usually, um, I'm usually okay during, you know, rough weather. Because my deal is if, um, and thank goodness, Hearst also, um, they were like, if there's lightning, you don't go live. You know, big rule. 
Um, and so if it's like really heavy rain or lightning, we won't get out and we won't do what we're doing. But um, there have been a couple of times where um, one in particular I can remember happened actually in, I think, Edwards. And um, my photographer may have pushed someone out of the way that was the father of a victim. And he didn't know at the time. He oh. Was a photographer. And he was still like trying to understand everything. A verbal confrontation. But um, the deputies and they kind of like sorted everybody out and then yeah. leave. So when tempers flare during certain stories, um, it's very possible. Like I said, it's happened to me uh, twice. Um, neither one of those times, you know, that I started, but, you know, we ended up, you know, luckily being able to get out of those situations. But I have heard um, of other journalists uh, especially at my uh, station uh, that have been involved in situations once like, a shooter at the mall and mm. the young lady was, she kept hearing something zoom by her, but she thought it was like a bug. So she kept doing like this and the said it turned out like the deaf went over and were like, they're shooting at you, get down. Oh my goodness. She didn't know, like she really just thought, you know, a bug, like move, move. So, <laughs> oh no, so no, 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 no. It's like a shootout or anything like that where I, you know, fear for my life, but yeah. <laughs> uh, it can be I mean, fair. I've seen so many situations and, you know, some of it is, looks pretty bad. Like you said, they'll have shootouts or things of that nature. We've seen some things that, Fortunately, it didn't turn out that bad. Wind up being Burt Case, the incident with the dog. Um, you know, that made national news. <laughs> Poor Burt had to try to defend himself the best way he could. But, you know, so we've seen plenty of stories. But I always wonder, you know, what goes through a journalist's mind? Because is it like, OK, I got to get the story no matter what? And because if it were up to me. I mean, when you go to when you go to me, let's like let's go to Quincy and see what's going on. I'm going to be behind the truck, <laughs> reporter. <laughs> so I'm not going to be anywhere where I have to worry about bullets, you know, whizzing by my head, and I'm thinking they're bugs. So, well, I, I think it, it it just depends, you know. Um, I will tell you that uh, some stations, more than others, they want you safe. They want you to come home. They want you to go home to your family. So. They never going to put you in where uh, you are in harm's way. But um, when those things happen, it's a team effort to make sure everyone is safe at the end of the day. So yeah, never worry about that. They'll make sure okay. Hey, it's a reason why I'm a podcaster and you're the journalist. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, well, all right. Outside of the journalism, you're also an entrepreneur. Um, you know, tell my audience about some of your business ventures. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm just like a lot of people out there. I have my hands on everything. I'm always into something. I'm always looking for the next thing. Um, I started a uh, construction company in New Orleans. So I'm uh, a CEO of East of Wick Construction, LLC, where I'm a general contractor. Uh, that just came out of my love of real estate. And I am a landlord. I own um, multiple properties in New Orleans. I always have. I just had like a really great crew of different guys that I could call. Like all the time that I had spent in Jackson, I would just call them on the phone and say, hey, I have an issue with plumbing. Can you go over, check it out? They gave me great prices. They, you know, professional, easy to work with. So uh, I just took that great group of guys that I ladies and just built my company that but then i couldn't stop there because i have like this thing where i just have to keep doing things i can't sit idle so um i also started an airbnb in one of my um uh houses that i bought 
Uh, as most of you know, the Airbnb market kind of went uh, south. Uh, Thanks to COVID. COVID, appreciate you. Uh, hope you're not in 2021. Uh, so we just took those uh, units and turned them into regular rentals. Um, I also recently started um, a, I wouldn't say it's actually a clothing line, but we do do apparel, um, but it's just for Christmas. It's our um, Wall and Santa. Oh, uh, ah, okay. I see Santa getting down right there. Yes, Wall and yeah. Santa on the shoe. So we're selling like the shirts, uh, the sweatshirts and selling the mask. And those are online at uh, Wall and Santa. Uh, dot my Shopify dot com. Uh, we're selling these, and um, I don't know. Just let's see what what I can come up with next. It's always going to be something. <laughs> okay, okay. Hold the shirt up again. So these are the sweatshirts. I'm trying to make sure I'm doing this right. See, this yeah, is, yeah, you got it. Yeah, but this is the um, wall and sand, and okay. the forty bucks. We've got small, medium, large, extra large, and then mm -hmm. we have the um, the mask and uh those are 20 bucks all right so yeah you have a lot going on you have a lot going on i mean with all of that work i don't know when you have time to play i mean but i do want to talk about tammy the person as far as what do you do for fun i mean what do you consider the perfect day off for you oh wow i get days off that's <laughs> <laughs> well maybe i shouldn't say day off Oh, that's amazing. Well, growing up in New Orleans, I have always been an avid boater. And so you're more likely to catch me on the lakefront or, you know, on one of the boats out there uh, on a jet ski. Um, I will admit I have not done it as often as I would like to because I'm always, you know, working. But um, I love doing that. I love um, just going for a ride. You know, but I'm really kind of boring. Like, I guess the perfect day for me is like starting off in the morning cooking and then maybe doing a little sewing, then taking a ride. I don't know. I'm, I'm yeah. boring. I, I don't. Yeah, you are not boring. I am boring. I don't like I, outside of work. I really don't do that much. I really don't. And people are always fascinated. But like, it's like different. When you grow up in New Orleans, you get kind of all the the clubbing and the partying out your system early because we do all that in like our teens and stuff. And so by the time you're in your 20s, just kind of like over it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, look, this might just be me, but you kind of turn into an old woman and you're just like, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm gonna stay inside. It's kind of cold out there. I'm just gonna <laughs> I don't believe any of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you say so, if you say so. I'm serious. Like, I, I don't really do much. Like, Sundays is like Saints Sunday. So, you know, we'll put on our Saints gear and whatnot and uh, maybe go to the cigar bar out uh, for a couple hours. But, I mean, other than that, you know, for fun, you, you might catch me, you know, cooking or something, you know. Probably. Okay. Any particular type of cuisine you like to cook? Um, I'm multinational. I do a little bit of everything. Um, obviously, you know, most people know me for my gumbo. Um, I get marriage proposals on my gumbo. <laughs> but I, I do I do a little bit of everything. You know, I can do sushi, um, obviously, um, Haitian and Sicilian. So I make a, a lot of uh, Haitian dishes with Cajun twist and Facility. Hmm. Um, I like, uh, you know, obviously Creole food. You know, there's the mustard greens, the etouffee, you know, do lasagna. Yes, That's Lord. I love lasagna. Oh, you should. We, we do some interesting things. So, um, stuff bell peppers, obviously. We do like either with the seafood in it, or we can do the ground beef. I put them with ground now I want to go cook. Where's the pot? <laughs> All right. Well, say what? <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so we'll get ready to, to wrap things up. Looks like you have uh, someone who's a Saints fan as well. Shout out to Deborah Cole out there in Texas. I hear you, Deborah. Who that? <laughs> All right, so we'll get ready to wrap things up. But, um, you know, you, you take a lot of pictures in a variety of places. You know, I follow you, of course, on social media, and the camera seems to love you. And you do a color of the day on your social media pages. How did that start? Every day you'll take a picture and you'll say today's color is blue or something and you'll be wearing something with blue in it or whatever. How did all this start? Well, I like to blame my boss from for that, um, Ben Hart over at uh, WAPT News um, when he was our news director. Um, Hearst had a mandate kind of that they wanted all their uh, on-air personalities to post every day to social media to uh, gain viewership. Uh, Because at the time, they believed that, you know, when people saw you on social media, that would encourage them to watch TV. Um, So I was like, well, goodness, what am I going to post? Because, like, I'm boring. I don't really do anything. And, oh, my goodness. So it's just, I don't know where, honestly. But just all of a sudden, I said to myself, just post the color of the day. It was something that was easy to do. You know, I already... um, kind of dress myself do um every day based on a color um which has a lot to do with the straw this f um it's supposed to put out good vibes and good luck for you if you wear a certain color today and so i just decided to start posting that wasn't um it was something where i can post it was technical it wasn't over the top it was simple to do um, it could be anything, jewelry, clothing, and it didn't have to be complicated. You know, it could be like today just happens to be red, but also I've got a black stripe on this, so it could have been black. So it's okay, like perfect. We're doing so as long as, as long as that color color is somewhere present on your body, it qualifies. There you go. There you go. It doesn't have to be the full red dress. It could just be a little bit of it, kind of like a St. Patrick's Day, as long as you got a little ribbon, that's mm-hmm. good, then you're good to go. Yep. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, Tammy, let the people know where they can find all things Tammy Estwick. You know, how can they connect with you online or how can they um, give the address again for the um, Wild and Santa? Oh, sure. So um, all my social media pages have always been the same. They're all, you'll find them all just under my name, Tammy Eswick, S-E-W-I-C-K. Um, for the Wild and Santa gear, it's uh, W-I-L-D-N-S-A-N-T-A dot my Shopify, M-Y-S-H-O-P-I-Y dot com. Um, that's if you want to get any of those sweatshirts or masks. And if enough people order, I'm Take a drive up to Jackson to drop them off. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you guys, I really do. <laughs> Say what now? I miss you guys. I really do. I, I miss hey. you. Well, you know, this is always your second home, so you can always come back to your second home. Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell you what, when you do come back, we'll hit the cigar shop. How about that? You're on. <laughs> All right. Well, Tammy, I appreciate you taking the time to do this Q on one broadcast of the Talk to Q radio show. And um, I will be sure on the talk to Q.com show page to post the link to the um, the Wild and Santa. So if people didn't have an opportunity to write it down. I'll make sure they'll have easy access to it. But um, we'll have to do this again in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care. Will do. Later, Gators. (laughs) All right, everyone. So I appreciate you all taking the time to join the show. And we will see you next time. Peace out.